hello, it's 1.29 in the morning and I'm just back from a gig. The gig was a really nice gig, really fun, really enjoyed it. It was in Rugby, which is an hour away from my local train stations. I was thinking, wow, an hour there, an hour back, that's you know one of the quickest journeys I kind of make to gigs. Most gigs seem to be at least a couple of hours. So I was thinking, okay, awesome, an hour there, an hour back, travelled there for an hour. £15 in the train, I thought, okay, that's fair enough, you know, I'm getting paid 50 quid to do the gig, that's absolutely fine, I'm happy with that, I'm making 35 quid, awesome. Gig went really well, people really enjoyed it, I had a lovely time messing around, um, and then I went to get the train home from rugby, and I saw uh, there were some cancellations and delays, but I managed to get a train to Milton Keynes, where the guy at rugby said, I'll get the one to Milton Keynes, change there, you'll be alright. Then I saw the, the last train home to Tring was delayed by over an hour, but was supposed to be at 10 past midnight. And I was thinking, okay, that's that's great, because that means I can claim this ticket back and still get home, and it means I've made 50 quid from the gig. Awesome. But that train didn't turn up, even though it was still on the board saying delayed until like half midnight there was three or four people waiting for it it just apparently had been cancelled and they didn't say on the board so i then had to get a taxi home from milton Keynes at the cost of 65 no sorry 64 pounds 64 pounds yeah of course i'll get 50 pound back from reclaiming back my ticket now which means for tonight's gig i've made a pound Headline the gig and make it a pound. This is the life of a comedian. Um, another thing that went wrong. I <laughs> had a lovely chat in the taxi with this bloke called Ali. Um, a couple of things. Number one. At one point he asked, what do you do for a living? And I panicked and lied because I don't like talking about comedy. I don't like saying I'm a comedian and talking to a taxi driver about it. Or anyone about it. Anyone I don't really know. Because I don't want to be asked to tell me a joke. I don't want to be asked. Oh so are you Michael McIntyre? I don't want anyone to go. Do you know who I like? Jim Davidson or whatever. I don't give it. You know I don't want that chat. So I would just said. Oh I'm. I'm a. I'm a website designer. Just made it up. Out the blue. I've never designed a website apart from my own. Which is average at best. And he started saying to me. Oh my brother's got a company. Like a 10 million pound company. We've got a massive company. But we want to make a new website, and maybe you'll be the person to do that. I'll give you my number, here's my number, and uh, ring me up, you know, this is the website, write it down, and you could be the one to do it. Because I'm not part of the family business, I left it five years ago, but I need to get back into it, and I want to bring something to the table. And you're the thing I'm going to bring to the table, Tom. And I would, I've agreed to, to design someone's website. I'm not going to do it, I'm thinking maybe in the future I might just say I'm a comedian, because I don't want to end up accepting... I'm going to fix someone's website when I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to throw that in the bin, probably. Um, so that was the first thing. And the second thing was, you know, we talked about a few things. We talked about UFC. We talked about, um, uh, you know, other, him exercising at his gym and he's, how he's got a lot fitter recently. Good on him. Good job. You know, he was a lovely bloke. I liked him a lot. Uh, sorry if you're somehow watching this. Sorry about the whole website. Fib. I think you're a nice guy and I do feel bad. But I've just got... I just get a bit anxious and don't like talking about my comedy. Sorry, mate. Um, but yeah, nice guy. Keep up the exercise. You're doing good, Ali. Good job, mate. But then he was like, OK, so let's talk about Brexit. And I was like, OK, great. Um, I'm kind of a bit bored with Brexit. It's everywhere. I'm a bit tired of it. And I asked him, what did you vote? And he said he voted leave. Um, you know, taxi driver um, called Ali. Not a, a, a white person. Kind of surprised that he voted leave. Um, I don't know why. I guess because the whole media narrative just tells you that all leave voters are, are white people. Which clearly they're not because Ali voted leave. So, um, yeah, something to think about. And he said basically he voted leave because um, he didn't like the he didn't like the idea of the EU being a super army, like the idea of the UK being dragged into wars to be part of this big super army. Which first of all I think he's misunderstood 
what the EU stands for. It's not that's not happened in the last forty years or whatever. I don't think it's going to suddenly happen. And then I said to him, "Oh, but you know, the UK just get dragged into wars with America anyway. Don't you think that'll just still happen?" And he was like, "Oh no, but America will never leave the EU." And that was me gone. Um, and then he said, "Like, oh, you know, I don't think they should have let people." vote for something when they don't know what they're voting for and I was like well yeah that, most people have kind of said that but I, I agree and then I tried to sway him sort of you know he was on about oh people if people voted for the NHS then um you know um they've not got what they want and then I was like yeah because the Tories will never look after the NHS and I was like that's why I'm going to vote for Corbyn in the election because I think Labour are the only party we can trust to look after the NHS and I kind of said that to him and then sort of said to him, oh, you know, and Corbyn as well, you'd like him. He also has changed, he also has a healthy diet, like he told me about, and he also exercises. So I think he's the one who will look after the um, NHS, and I think he's a good person to vote for. And I think anyone but the Tories is better because the way they've run the country over the last 10 years. And he was like, yeah, you, you make some good points. So hopefully I've at least, you know, <laughs> converted a voter. Who knows? Who knows? But, um... Yeah, vote for Labour in the next election. <laughs> That's the last bit. Just because I quite like having an N N N I quite like having the NHS, and if we lose that, I don't think we'll ever get it back, and that's terrifying. That's really terrifying. So, you know, I don't give a shit if people are like, I don't like everything Corbyn's done, or everything John McDonald's done, whatever. It's like, yeah, they're, they're not perfect. You don't get perfect politicians, but, you know, just for the sake of, the vulnerable people in our country, specifically the, you know, 200,000 vulnerable people who lost their lives due to benefit sanctions and the rising homeless people. Like, vote for them. Don't vote for you. Don't vote for what you think of these people. Vote for them and vote for the right decision because if the Tories get back in, that's just a vote for them to keep doing what they're doing. But this is gone into something very different. But, um... At least I got home, I suppose, and, um, yeah.